Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the game Adrenaline, designed by Philip Neduck and published in 2016 by Czech Games Edition. Adrenaline takes the classic first-person shooter-style computer games and turns them into a board game. Grab your weapons, load them with ammo, and hunt down your opponents. In a game of Adrenaline, players take individual turns to move around the board, pick up weapons, and use them to attack the other players. When you deal damage to someone, place your blood drop markers on their player board. When a player has taken enough damage, their figure is removed from the board, and points are awarded to all players who contributed to their death. Anyone who is killed immediately respawns to carry on fighting, but each death removes one of the skulls from the kill shot track, and when they're all gone, the game is over, and the player with the most points wins. On your turn, you get to perform two actions from the ones available to you, shown on the left side of your player board. The actions are run around, which allows you to move up to three spaces on the board, grab stuff, which means you can move one space and then pick something up, either a weapon or some ammo, and shoot, which allows you to use one of your weapons to damage your opponents. You can perform the same action more than once if you want to. And at the end of your turn, you get to reload any of your weapons if you have the necessary ammo. Probably the coolest thing about the game, and the reason why the game is called Adrenaline, is that as you yourself take damage, your adrenaline levels rise, and you get to move faster. This is represented in the game by these two adrenaline actions. The first unlocks once you have taken three points of damage, and it allows you to move up to two spaces and then pick something up and the second one allows you to move one space before you attack, which may not sound much, but it can make a big difference. You can pick up a weapon from one of the three weapon points on the map. When one is taken, it's replaced with a new one from the deck at the end of the turn, and every weapon is unique. When you pick up a weapon, the card goes into your hand. This represents that the weapon is loaded and ready to use you can have up to three weapons. When you attack with a weapon, play the card onto the table and resolve its effect by following the instructions on it. A lot of weapons, such as the plasma gun, use simple rules to determine who you can attack. You can see, and therefore shoot at, anyone in the same room as you. And, if you are next to a doorway, you can also shoot at anyone in the whole of that room as well by peeking around the doorway. Other weapons, such as the flamethrower, have more specific targeting requirements, this requires your targets to be in a line as shown. The number of blood drops over the icon of your target shows how much damage you'll deal to them, so the flamethrower deals one damage to the two targets as shown here. For each point of damage you deal someone, place one of your blood drop markers on their player board from left to right. Some weapons have alternative fire modes, such as the shotgun, which deals three damage to a target in the same space as you, and pushes them back, or it does two damage to a target in an adjacent space. Other weapons have optional additional effects, such as the plasma gun, which allows you to move up to two spaces before or after your attack. And also, if you spend an additional blue ammo when you use the weapon, it does an additional point of damage. Once a weapon is used, it stays face up on the table until you reload it. This is done at the end of your turn by paying the cost in ammo cubes shown in the top left of the weapon. The plastic cubes represent three different types of ammunition. You'll need more ammo as the game goes on, and you get more of it by using the grab stuff action on a space with an ammo tile. According to what's shown on the tile, move cubes from your own reserve into the ammo section of your player board. You're limited to having at most three of each type of ammo during the game. The ammo tile is then replaced with a new one from the pile at the end of your turn. Some ammo tiles only show two ammo cubes, but they also show a power-up card. Power-up cards are drawn from the deck and go into your hand. It does not cost an action to play a power-up card, and they allow you to do cool things and set up great combos when combined with other weapons. For example, if I have the railgun, which shoots in straight lines and through walls, I could play the Newton power-up, moving Sprog to here, then I could play my teleporter to move here, and now my railgun can be used to awesome effect.
When a player's health bar is filled, they're killed, and scoring takes place. The player who dealt them the most damage gains 8 points, the one who dealt the second most damage 6 points, and so on. There's also an additional point for the player who got first blood. The blood drop marker that caused the kill shot is taken from the player board and placed on the kill shot track of the main game board, replacing one of the skulls, which in turn is placed over the number 8 on the player board. This means that if that player is killed again during the game, they're now worth fewer points. When killed, you will respawn at one of the spawn points. You don't lose any of your weapons or ammo, you just keep fighting. Death is not the drawback that it used to be in the olden days. Once all the skulls have been removed from the kill shot track, there's an additional round where players have one more chance to deal as much damage as they can. Then the game ends and final scoring takes place. All player boards are scored at the end of the game, and additional points are awarded based on who has the most markers on the kill shot track. And at the end of the game, the player with the most points wins. The rules that I've explained so far are for the deathmatch version of the game, but there are two other modes of play included in the box. In domination mode, in addition to shooting each other, players are also trying to control the three spawn points by tagging them. To tag a spawn point, you need to deal damage to it with a weapon, or you need to end the turn as the only character in that space. The domination board tracks the players that tag the spawn points, and each of these is scored at the end of the game instead of the normal kill shot track. In the turret variant, the arena shoots back. Ammo tiles are not placed in the arena, but five of them are placed on the turret board instead. When you're on a turret space, you can either grab one of the ammo tiles on offer, or commandeer the turret, which then damages all players who enter its space. Points are rewarded at the end of the game for control of the turret, rather than the normal kill shot track. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Adrenaline. For more of my how to play videos, please visit my YouTube channel and subscribe. And for more great games from CGE, please visit checkgames.com. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.